All right, I've got 12 o'clock on my clock. So that means it's time to get going, right? Start on time, end early. Well, here we are, we're at the fifth of our sixth presentation in the series of the USPS promotions. Just like that, almost a year has gone by, it's amazing. Uh, you know, we started doing these webinars uh, last year and at the time, it just seemed like a good way to communicate information to everybody in an easy way. And now, as you all know, this is the way we're doing everything. So thank you all for joining. Uh, my name is Chris Wells. Uh, today, we're going to talk about mobile shopping. Uh, before we get started, a couple of housekeeping things for some of the uh, new folks on the webinar. I do see some new names. You'll see that you all have a little control panel. That control panel uh, gives you a couple of options. One is to ask a question. So you can ask a question during the presentation. I probably won't stop and answer it, um, but I will leave some time at the end to uh, look at them because otherwise I'm kind of going like this. So uh, if you have a question during the presentation, feel free to put it there. Um, also, you'll notice that there's a um, uh, handout um, expansion window, if you expand that orange uh, control panel. So there is one handout for today. Uh, it gives a, goes over the details of the program like normal and well as well it will also give you some links to other webinars that we've done and other important information. Um, as you know, when you registered for this webinar, you were redirected to a page where you could pick a free gift. Uh, I sent that ship list in yesterday, so you should all be getting that uh, fairly quickly. And you didn't have to attend to get it, but uh, if you're on here now, I can see you, and if you drop off, I may uh, I may recall it. Just kidding. Uh, anyways, so here we go, mobile shopping. Um, I'm gonna go over the, as we normally do, the key elements of what this promotion is. And again, these are all put, off by the, put out by the USPS, basically to try to get everybody to use the Postal Service more, uh, but they give some kind of nice incentives. And like with most of these programs, what we found is that if you look behind the theory of why some of these things work, even though you may not apply them directly to the promotion portion of this, um, you can usually get some pretty good response uh, or increases in response on your direct mail campaigns. And this one is one of those. So we know we don't have a ton of people on this webinar or even in our customer base that do a lot of uh, retail shopping experiences. There are a few components of this that I think many of you can take advantage of that I'm gonna go over, uh, but the theory behind um, interacting with people through a direct mail piece is really what we're what we're talking about the value of this and that also ties into promotional products and how to use promotional products to increase the success of your direct mail campaign or your email campaign uh, which is one of the reasons why a lot of you are here today because you got a free promotional item so the program itself kind of to the letter of the law is specifically for direct mail campaigns that encourage mobile shopping one of the great things about this campaign is that there's a very wide definition of mobile shopping. So one of the pieces that they do include in a mobile shopping category are donations. So if you're in the nonprofit world, if you're in the development office of a college or university, uh, any type of uh, uh, fundraising type of activity, you could actually qualify for this promotion if you utilize technology to allow people to make that donation through uh, some web mobile enabled app uh, off of the direct mail piece. So I'll get into that a little bit more in a minute. But anyways, it has to have a scannable, reg either a registered uh, augmented reality marker, which we're gonna talk about a little, a QR code, uh, near field communication, either engraved into the paper or a sticker, something that will allow the mobile device to launch to a mobile friendly shopping site. Now, if you are selling products and services and people can order them online, it can go right to a mobile friendly version of that. Uh, if you're utilizing this to collect donations or for a capital campaign or something like that, if it goes to a mobile friendly uh, donation page, that would also qualify. There has to be some sort of directional copy just to say, here's what you do to scan this. Uh, and the site has to be uh, allow the person to use a to make a financial purchase that's not a bill pay. So you can't be uh, paying your bill or your invoice or something like that. It's got to be uh, buying a product, signing up for a subscription service. Uh, paying for another service or a donation or something like that. If you do all those things, you'll receive a 2% discount on the postage rate for that direct mail campaign. And like all these other ones, you can do these as many times as you want. So the campaign can qualify and you can, and you can, you can keep doing it. Yeah, you can do multiple campaigns, there's no limit. 
So the dates, the registration period started last month, but the actual promotion doesn't start until August 1st. So it goes all the way through the end of the year. As with all these USPS campaigns, we do need approval from the post office. Basically, they'll need to see the creative uh, and they'll need to just validate that your site is actually mobile friendly and that you have directional copy and that when you go there, you can make a purchase. And that usually takes them three to five days. So build a little bit of time into your schedule to get that approval. So what are some examples? Well, there's the real simple things that we think about when we think about mobile shopping. You can see the Bed Bath & Beyond um, coupon here with a little QR code, old school QR. Those of you that know me know I hated QR codes for a long, long time. I thought they were misused, underused, um, and just people started putting them on everything. I love them now. And the reason I love them now is because our phones just work when you shine the camera on the QR code. You don't have to download any apps. You don't have to worry about it being able to be read. So because now the technology is very easy to use, most people know how to use it. You don't need a special app. QR codes are back in. So uh, this, uh, this is just a simple scan the QR code and it will link to a coupon where you can go and buy something online. Um, you can also use augmented reality. So augmented reality is another one of those things that worked really well, but you needed to download an app in order to launch it. So augmented reality, we have a whole webinar about it. Um, so you can kind of go back and watch that if you haven't seen it yet. But basically it's creating a virtual experience within the camera of your phone that's merged with your real world surroundings. So either animation, things popping off the page, a video playing within a certain section of whatever you're looking at, whatever it happens to be. So um, using a marker used to require the use of an app. And we had a private label app, we had customers of private label apps. Now that's awesome because most augmented reality can be done in what's called web AR. So you can utilize things like a QR code that will not just launch you to a website, it will actually launch an augmented reality experience. Again, there's more information about that in some of our previous webinars. But that's another way you can launch into the mobile site. An augmented reality, click here to buy, you click the button, it brings you to the website. So you see a couple of examples here with Mariano's Pizza and uh, the magazine here where these little buttons show up. Uh, you can also launch augmented reality through near field communication. So some of you that were on our mailing list for our emerging technologies program, you got a postcard, had a little sticker on the back. If you had an Android or an iPhone 11, you just pass your phone near that sticker and it would launch to the augmented reality. Um, if you have a, a previous version of iPhone, uh, you need to download an app to do that. So it's still not great. So anyways, a lot of ways to get to the site, but you've got to use some technology that people can launch to the mobile site directly from their phone. That's the key. So why is this important? Well, first of all, uh, and I'm trying to get new data on some of this stuff uh, because I think some of this has probably changed with the uh, with the coronavirus stuff, things that we've, we've had going on and how many people have had been forced to go mobile and online. Um, but as of 2018, we already saw a huge increase in mobile commerce sales or M commerce sales. You can look at it almost doubling in two years to 83% or three years, 83% increase. So if you're not offering the ability to make a purchase, a donation on a mobile app, it's time to get, get with it because this is definitely a trend and this is where more and more purchases are being made. Look at your own behavior. More and more, of, I know the things I'm buying are now being done off of my phone versus off of my desktop or, or notebook computer. The crazy thing about it is there are so many retailers out there. So I know there are a few people on the webinar today that are in the retail industry. Um, the percentage of retailers that actually have a smartphone app uh, is still very low. Even as of 2018, only 25% of company retail companies had a smartphone app. There are so many companies out there that develop apps and they're relatively inexpensive. Get an app developed. Uh, because then you have less competition, right? If you have a great app and it's not just going to a website, people hate that. And the shortcut is a website, is a, is a shortcut to, to launch a website. That's not the way you do it. Um, to get an actual app, it will set you across from your, from your competition. The other part about this type of campaign is that we have seen increasingly better responses with direct mail response rates uh, but, but particularly since 2010. And you kind of saw this drop in direct mail as email direct marketing came out, SMS text, social media, things like that. Direct mail is starting to make a comeback, particularly 
on prospects, so people that you don't know. You can see there's been a huge jump also in what we call house lists. So these would be people that are familiar with you, you know, your prior customers or, 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 or people that you've done business with before. But look at the change in the prospects, people that you currently ha aren't doing business with. Huge, huge increase in direct mail response. I'm very excited to see the results from 2019 and then into 2020 because what we're seeing is a lot of our customers and probably a lot of you have really tailed back on their marketing efforts, particularly during the, uh, the, the, the pandemic that we've had here. We've seen a few that have actually increased and their response rates are through the roof. And one of the reasons is less competition. There's less competition in the mailbox and people are afraid to spend money. They're afraid to go out and do the marketing because of a lot of things, right? You have to be so careful about what you say. What's the messaging? You don't want to be tone deaf. Uh, budgets, you know, are we going to continue to see this this, this decrease in, in, in our sales and everything else? But there is a big opportunity for those companies that have chosen to go out pretty hard with the marketing side. Very, very good direct mail response rates. You have a much more captive audience if you can get to them. So beyond just kind of the overall trend we're seeing, there's some unique things happening today. And I'm gonna share with you some hot off the press information I got from the USPS in a, in a, in a slide or two. Also, consumer preference, right? People get their mail every day, 99%. I, I've said this in a lot of webinars. I don't know who the 1% are that don't, but most people get their mail every day. Most people still look and read their mail every day. Very few people do that with their personal emails. Um, and 84% of consumers prefer to shop online with a catalog in their hand. So some of you I know are in the catalog business. You know this, right? You live by this. So make it easier for them with a mobile app. Make it easier for them with a direct link. And guess what? If you do that during this time frame, August 1st through the end of the year, you're also going to save 2% on your postage costs, which if you're mailing catalogs, as you, those of you who mail catalogs know, it's not insignificant. Catalogs are not cheap to mail. So I got a, uh, a, a, um, a white paper from our national rep at the USPS last week, and I started looking through it, and there was just some really good stuff about direct mail. And you guys were the lucky participants. Uh, that's the first webinar I've done since I've got it. But I wanted to share a couple of quick slides with you just on the study that they've done um, in terms of the effect on uh, direct mail like that COVID has had, as well as some generational things that were kind of surprising to me. So this is all like real brand new, fresh data. This was interesting. This looked at, they, they looked at um, what, what was uh, what kind of effect was COVID-19 having on people in terms of uh, checking their mail? And you can see it looks at millennials, Gen Xers, and boomers. So if you look at the uh, the same, it's pretty much all the same, right? 69%. Only 12 have had a less it has less of effect, but 18% said it's a slightly more. They're checking their mail more often. But look at where that is so, is focused. It's in the millennials. 28% of them said they were checking their mail more often. So this also goes to what I shared with you earlier about some of the success stories we're seeing in direct mail today. The other thing is they looked at the importance of mail. So they looked at um, was it whether it was more important, less important, or the same importance that it was three years ago. Again, look at this by generation. We're seeing a fundamental shift here in uh, generations, particularly with millennials, on how they perceive direct mail. This is pretty exciting for people like us, <laughs> obviously, but it's exciting for people that you utilize this as a way to communicate because what's happening is the trust level of social media, as we all know, continues to go down and down and down and down. Even the products and services that we're getting advertised about, we hate it when we mention something. My son came over the other day. He told me he bought indestructible shoes. I said, well, what are indestructible shoes? We had this whole conversation about indestructible shoes. There's these shoes you can step on a nail. Uh, they have steel toes, but they look like sneakers. Sure enough, when I go to Facebook, first ad that shows up is indestructible shoes. We all hate this, right? So people are starting to get more frustrated with this, particularly in the millennial generation. So this was amazing, right? 49% said mail is more important to them today than it was three years ago. So we can utilize that to our advantage. So one of the things about mobile shopping, we talked about how the, the postage promotion uh, is based on being able to order something online. We have an ulterior motive here. And our, our ulterior motive was to show you as a participant in this webinar and some first time participants, how offering somebody a little ordering thing where they can get something for free, a little gift can drive people to 
attendance at a webinar to downloading a white paper, whatever it happens to be. We believe we provide some value. We hope you guys get some value out of this. Uh, but we're not we're not so proud that we're not uh, willing to give away a Slamo game set or a peer, pair of earbuds or something to get people to come here. Because part of it is I wanted to show you how it works. So these, what you see on this chart here, are all of our different webinars that we've done. And you can see we have tactile sensory interaction, emerging advanced technology, earn value, trans promo, and mobile shopping. And you can see our email open rates there. You know, the earn value is kind of a very specific one. Not people, not many people get excited about business reply envelopes. But other than that, you know, they're 24 to 32 percent, something like that. You can see our uh, conversion rates, which is the amount of people that sign up based on the amount of people we email to, and our link to register rate, which means how many people that actually clicked the link in the email then went on to register for the webinar. Look at that chart. 74% of people who clicked the link in the email actually signed up for the webinar. And it's a free webinar. And you know what? I've got, right now, I always think I'm gonna get the lowest attendance on that versus what signed up. I'm showing 95% attendance right now. 95% of the people that signed up for this for free didn't have to come to get their gift, but still came anyways. So the point is promotional product offers work. They don't have to be you know, a $40 item. They can be a $2 or $3 or $5 item. We gave out 10, $15 Grubhub gift cards for webinars. They really, really, really work. And we've got something very exciting for you. And again, this is the first group we're sharing this with. So one of the things that we've decided to do on social media is create what we're calling the Meg and Jess show. So as it relates to promotional products, anybody that, of you that have utilized us, you know Meg and you know Jess, there are rock stars in this. So they're going to be putting on a weekly show where they're gonna talk about what the trends are in promotional products, availability, which is big, right? Everybody wants PPE, they want masks, they want um, you know, gloves, hand sanitizers, all these other things. So they are have their finger on their pulse on in terms of what's happening in the marketplace from availability. So little, little re free gift to you, um, sign up for that and watch that. They're gonna get some great ideas on what's trending in the promotional products world. They see it all, so they have a pretty good, pretty good insight to it. Here's some information. This is all in your handout, but just so you know, the recorded webinars that we have, we've added quite a few. So these are all available on our webinars channel, dsgraphics.com slash webinars. Um, and there's the promotional program ones. We also had a re-engagement after COVID-19 webinar that we did, one on response optimization and omni-channel marketing, one all about this um, UV inkjet press that we've uh, that we've recently installed. That was in combination with Konica Minolta and GPA, which is a really cool substrate, substrate provider. Um, also, our YouTube channel has those as well. So feel free to uh, feel free to to hit all those places. So. Again, all that is in the handout. I'm gonna give you guys a few minutes here. I got 17 minutes past the hour. So again, we're gonna wrap up. I'm gonna check for any questions. Um, all I have is my awesome comments from Mary. Thank you. <laughs> if you have any questions, I am gonna leave the webinar open for three or four more minutes. I'll give you guys a chance to download the, uh, the handout paper. And if any questions come up, I will answer them, answer them then. You'll also see a survey when you log out of this and also in the follow-up email. We're just interested in when everybody's going back to work. So it's just one question. Just let us know, click the radio button that most corresponds when your staff expects to be fully back in the office. Uh, that's helpful for our planning standpoint and our customers are interested in that, particularly those that are marketing to businesses. All right, everybody have an awesome day and I'll talk to you soon.